In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we're going to look at how to transition one clip over another, only use a, a wedge or an angle that separates the two. I have a clip here that I'm going to use on track one. It's two people on bicycles. So what we're going to do is take that and drag that and, and drop it in track number one. It's 21 seconds and 14 frames. So now what I'm going to do is take another track. Let's take this motorcycle track. We'll drag it down into track number two. We'll put it in about two, roughly two uh, seconds in. Uh, it can be approximate here. Now normally if we play it like it exists right now, uh, play the movie, what I will see when I move back here is I will see the first track, number one, and then it simply is overlaid by two. So in order to make the one replace the other in a more interesting fashion, I need to use a mask. I'm going to click on track number two, and then I will click on the designer button above all my tracks, drop down and choose mask designer. Now what I want to do is I want to use a mask. Now I'm not going to use any of the default masks I have. I'm going to use one that I designed in Photoshop Elements. If you notice, it's almost a rectangle but it has this edge on it. So I'm going to take it, double click on it, and here is my mask. If I don't do anything else with it and, and start to play, I see it, it's masking uh, a, a visible hole into the first track, but all I get to see is the corner. That's not quite what I want, so I'm going to keyframe my mask. I'll take my playhead, move it all the way to the left, and uh, then make sure I'm not in the play mode here. I'll click my diamond for the position value in keyframing, and that will start a keyframe here uh, right at the beginning of this clip. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say I want the mask to, to be positioned over here off screen. So that's where we're going to start. Then when I, when I uh, walk through my, my video, since it's two seconds later, it should be about 19, 18, 19 sec seconds into the clip. This is just about at the end of it. I'm going to set another keyframe. I can click on the diamond or I can right click over here and add a keyframe. Now what I want to do for the keyframe for the mask here is I want the mask at this point in time to be all across the screen. Now normally I'd stop here, but that will give me a uh, blank area that I don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trick it. I'm going to move all the way over. Now I have a, a blank area over here. Well, how do I deal with that? Let me show you. I'm going to back out a little bit here so I can see more. And I'm actually going to, at this point in time, we're going to enlarge the picture, enlarge the mask this way. So now the mask covers. So when I'm at the end, I'll have an entire rectangle at this point in time. And so I will click my uh, Add New Keyframe here. And uh, I did not set a Scale Keyframe back here, so I need to go back to the beginning. And I'll need to rescale this down so it's the same scale it was when we started. And we'll start something like that. Let's see how that works. I'll hit my play. And now it slides across the screen from left to right. And it fills in. And let's make sure it covers all the screen at the end. And successful. Good for us. Okay, so now I have that part done. Let me show you another way to add a little bit more to this. I'll click on OK. So my mask has been successfully created. The other thing I want to do is when the mask starts to act on my cyclists in track number one, I'd like the cyclists to move from left to right a little bit too. 
So what I can do is I can click on my uh, screen here and as it begins to cover, let's, let's let the first part kind of cut the corner here and see how far I am here in, into my picture. I'm uh, 5 seconds and 10 frames. So I'll double click on this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keyframe this so the center of the picture keeps moving right as the mask moves right. I don't have to do this but I like that. So at, I'm going to click uh, position here and then we'll go down to the end of this clip and by the end of the clip I want the position to be virtually off screen here. Doesn't matter too much and I'll click on OK. And so now, let's see, let me drag my playhead across. Yeah. Now as I move it, the the two cyclists in the center of this uh, are kind of in the center of the picture until it disappears. And, oh, I wanted to add one more thing. We'll stop that. I'm also going to take this second clip, double click on it to get to my pip designer. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to add a little border to it. We'll make it a little fancy. I'll click on my border tool. Uh, default is white. Let's do a uh, two color gradient. Let's make one part white, one part black. And click on OK. I like the looks of that. And so uh, now I have a border on my on my second clip. I'll click OK. And uh, now we'll go ahead and play our movie. Back it up. And we have clip number one working. And in normal case, I do this a lot faster, but I wanted you to see the actual action here. And the cyclists were staying center frame until they're off the screen. And then the motorcycle guys come in and we have a nice transition with an angle. So my recommendation would be to shorten the distance between the keyframes. It will speed it up. But it's a really nice way to do a wedge style overlapping transition in Cyberlink PowerDirector.